That moment that a lot of us have been waiting for, the brand new G.I. Joe Classified Series. Inside here, I have a sealed case of six? Six figures, I believe? Yeah, six figures. Two snake eyes and then one each of the others. We're going to open this sealed case on camera, and then later on I'll do individual videos for each figure. This is a case inside of another box, packed so as not to be damaged. I ordered these from a independent toy retailer, a small, uh, small business, independent toy shop. And come on. All right. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to, no, I'm not. I don't want to tear up the box because chances are I'll reuse it for shipping something else later. There we go. We got plenty of ghost poop. Ghost poop packing peanuts. All right, give me a second. I'm going to clear this out, and then we'll get the sealed case out. And here we have them. The sealed Hasbro case. Elite Series figure assortment. G.I.J. So that's, uh, that's a little odd. The Elite Figure Series. The Elite Figure. Elite Series figure. I can't talk for some reason in this video. But uh, this is actually the classified series, or at least that's what it's put out there to be. I wonder if G.I. Joe Elite Series is maybe a name that they were going to go with or something, and that's just what's left over on the packaging. Stop. Okay. Let's cut it open. And I got to do this to be, I, I got to be careful doing this so that I don't damage any of the uh, figure boxes inside. I'm not going to open these right now, but uh, here soon. I'll put together a playlist of, uh, of videos where I go through all of the figures individually and I'll do some comparisons between these and some of Hasbro's other six inch offerings as well as uh, some of the articulated icons figures. God, check this out. This is so exciting to me. This is the first time, uh, the first time uh, in many, many years that I have gotten to open a sealed case of uh, of action figures of gi joe figures let's find just drop them all out here yes success all right i'm gonna save that box i'll probably put these back in that box i don't know yet man Oh my God. Okay, let me reposition the camera and then we'll check them out. In this wave one set of figures, we have Scarlet Duke Destro, the new recolored version of Snake Eyes. This is the same mold and comes with some of the same accessories as the uh, Hasbro Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes. I still haven't figured out exactly what's up with these guns and why they look so weird. I do see that the suppressor that he, uh, the, the classified, or, I'm sorry, that the Hasbro Pulse exclusive figure came with does come with this figure as well. And I'm assuming will attach to the pistol and, uh, well, let's say it only attaches to the pistol. It doesn't attach to the sub gun. It's still very strange, the, uh, the holes in those weapons. It makes me wonder if you can't attach those together with the suppressor somehow or something. That, that would be very strange. I'm not sure why they would do that. Each of these figures features artwork on the box from a different artist. And then, of course, you have this fantastic uh, mural on the back. Um, we'll get into Wave 2 in a bit. I was actually going to talk about Wave 2. But, um, all right, here is the Snake Eyes figure. At least one of these is going to get opened up and compared to the, uh, actually, I may not open it. I, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I'm, I'm still thinking on that. But I do want to uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison of this versus the Hasbro Pulse figure and see what all the actual differences are. And then we have Destro. 
One of the things that I like about these other figures uh, that I pointed out during the filming of the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes figure, um, one of the differences is that these, they, it, it's like they spent so much time, effort, and money on the packaging for that figure and totally neglected the accessories. Uh, all of his weapons were just plain, all black, nothing special about them. Uh, I do like the fact that he came with an Uzi and a, uh, a regular handgun, not a blaster or directed energy weapon, which is what it looks like the rest of these figures come with, like a like a directed energy directed energy guns. But uh, if you notice on uh, on Destro's larger handgun here, he does it it does feature paint apps. And that's one of the things that I really liked about some of the later uh, 25th anniversary or uh, mo quote unquote modern figures was that the weapons included paint apps and made them look a little bit better, but they totally neglected to do anything like that with Snake Eyes. And it was kind of annoying. Everything was just plain black. But Destro, Destro looks fantastic. Check out, check out the paint apps here on Destro. When I decide whether or not I'm going to open these, that's when we'll really get a good look at them. But everything looks really, really good on these figures. Okay, now we have Duke. Some people were complaining about the, uh, the way the gold paint app, the metallic paint apps looked. I dig it. You know, this is like a, this is almost like an M4 or M16. It'd be an M4, but it's a, a futuristic directed energy weapon. And the, uh, the handgun that he comes with almost looks like a Walther. And he comes with a, uh, a pouch. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Maybe binoculars or something or a monocular, but, um, the sculpting and everything on this figure looks fantastic. Uh, you know, paint is something that if you don't like, you can change that. You can uh, you can paint over it or whatever. Um, I'm not sure if it's the way the leg is positioned in the packaging, but it looks like that leg might be twisted out just a little bit. There are a couple things that I really, really like about this type of packaging. It displays the figure very, very well, but at the same time, I think that the vacuum forming can cause deformation of the plastic um the uh the hulk build a figure the actually the hulk build a figure is right there behind these guys but whenever we were going through that we were talking about shuri and how her legs were basically just kind of you know they were they were deformed they were twisted out and i believe that that is from the packaging not from the actual manufacturer of the figure i hope that's not the case with these i really want to get one of these out and check it out for the uh the quality and see just how it is we, when we looked at the um, uh, Hasbro Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes, the quality of that figure was fantastic. Uh, even like the paint apps and everything looked great on them. So here's the artwork on the, oops. Here is the artwork on the front and the side. All of these are numbered as well. You see this is number 04. The Hasbro Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes was uh, number 00. zero. And Roadblock is number one. Snake Eyes is number two. Destro is number three. So here is the exclusive artwork for that figure. And then you have the mural on the back. What's on the bottom? Nothing of any value. Awesome. Okay, here we have Scarlet. That is a damn good looking figure. I, I really am impressed with it. Uh, the sculpting and everything on this figure looks great. I'm going to zoom in on her face. Maybe. Ah, oh, come on. It's not one to focus for some reason. I'll get better shots of it. But anyway, on the face, there's actually so much detail in the paintwork on the face that you can see her freckles and her eyes look perfect. The, uh, the highlights and the hair and everything. I mean, this this figure, the paint, I think they did an excellent job on the paint with this figure. Uh, this G.I. Joe team is very futuristic. I, I'm curious as to whether or not they're going to put out a cartoon or something, uh, some other kind of media to support the release of these figures and or if they're just marketing them toward, uh, toward guys like me, you know, late 30s, early 40s, whatever. 
Um, it just depending on us. I know that there's a lot of people that have said that they have joined the ranks of the uh, G.I. Joe collectors because they released six inch figures. Uh, there six, there's a lot of six inch figures out there and those communities are huge compared to the GI Joe community, the GI Joe community. I, I think that a lot of those people prefer the three and three quarter inch O ring figures. But, um, I personally, I collect all kinds of different stuff. I got a bunch of 12 inch figures. I've got the Sigma six figures that are like what seven, eight inches tall. This really isn't a stretch for me. The only reason why I got into Legends figures at all was because I, these were coming out. And so, okay, so the G.I. Joe figures coming out in 6-inch scale actually prompted me to buy some other 6-inch scale figures, the Marvel Legends figures. Uh, I assumed that they would be of similar build and quality uh, since they both come from Hasbro. So I wanted to see what I was going to be getting into with uh, purchasing these figures. And the super nerd in me is basically, I don't want to open them. Man. I had every intention of opening every single one of these figures as soon as they came in and just keeping the boxes for display. I still want to open them, but yeah, I just, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, what I'm probably going to end up having to do is buy a whole other set of them. I'll just probably end up buying another sealed case of them if I can find one. And uh, <laughs> get my hands on them. Okay, so Roadblock is proportionately taller than the other figures, as he should be. There's a couple of things that I would like to mention about Roadblock and about the rest of these figures as well. Roadblock's outfit is an updated modern or fu actually it's an updated futuristic looking version of the uh, outfit worn by the original Roadblock. The original Roadblock also came with a very big gun. Uh, this figure also comes with a very, a, a very, a very big um, directed energy weapon. I'm a sci-fi fan. I like the directed energy weapons. I've seen where a lot of people have uh, had grievances with the directed energy weapons instead of them actually having real weapons. But if um, if you look back through the history of GI Joe, there was a lot of science fiction type stuff with those uh with this whole the whole story altogether. So it makes a lot of sense to me that they would really embrace that with these uh these new GI Joe classified series figures and go full on with the um the science fiction realm of it. So his his outfit looks uh very reminiscent of the original Roadblock figures outfit. And uh something else that they did here that I really like, I like the look of it. They gave him a beard they also gave some of these guys tattoos but they gave him a beard check this out they gave him a beard so the uh the version of roadblock that was in my favorite gi joe series renegades had a beard a beard or sideburns and they've uh they've kept going with that and i really like it i think that it makes the figure look fantastic the large tattoo over here on his arm. I don't really know exactly what that is, but um, you know we'll find out at some point. Uh, a buddy of mine actually opened one up and did a, a live unboxing of the figure that he picked up in a toy store not far from here. Uh, something that I've seen over and over again online is the expected release of Alley Vipers. If Alley Vipers come out, I'm going to army build them. I've definitely, you know, with um, some others that are supposed to be coming out, I kind of want to army build those too. And I'm not an army builder. I think these are the dopest dope. These are so cool to me. And I think that that probably has to do with the fact that it's just different. It's new. And it's G.I. Joe. I've loved G.I. Joe since I was a kid. And since I was actually like three or four years old is when I've got my very first G.I. Joe. And I fell in love then, and I've, I've never looked back. Uh, over the years, I've stopped collecting off and on uh, whenever things weren't really coming out and whatnot. But uh, I've, I've, been, I've always been a lover of, uh, of the G.I. Joe lore, the figures, everything about them. Uh, except the comics. I never really got too big into the comics. Um, I, I was more into uh, Marvel superheroes and whatnot. But this is Roadblock, and... I, I've got to say that I'm impressed with the look, the detail, and the uh, 
the overall image quality of these figures. I uh, can't really say much for the uh, build quality of them at this point, uh, except for the uh, Hasbro Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes. The quality of that figure was, uh, was really, really nice. Uh, this extra snake eyes that I have here, I'm probably going to send this off. Well, I'll actually leave that out of the video. This extra snake eyes may end up getting opened. I may open this one or, uh, find somebody who's needing one, can't find them, can't get them, whatever. But even the detail on this figure Considering the fact that it's molded all in black, it's very reminiscent of the 85 Snake Eyes uh, minus Timber. Timber is one of the things that I, I among many others, hoped that we would be able to uh, have with this figure. But unfortunately, we did not get a Timber. Uh, maybe in the future, if this line does well and they continue releasing these figures, uh, the, then we'll, we'll get a Timber. So... Now, on to another topic of discussion, the mural on the back. So, in the first wave, let me reposition here a little bit. So, in the first wave, we had the Snake Eyes figure. I'm going to go ahead and consider the Pulse exclusive part of the first wave. So, we get the Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes, and then we get this one, which is the retail variant. We get Duke. We get Scarlet. Roadblock and Destro. Wave 2 has already been announced uh, through some retailers. Wave 2 will consist of the Red Ninja, Gung Ho, and Cobra Commander. Each case, I believe, comes with two Cobra Commanders. Um... Let's, I, I'm actually not sure what comes in a sealed case. I know it's two Cobra Commanders and then some variation thereof of Gung Ho and the Red Ninja. There is also a, a Leopard Print Gold Head Destro that it was supposed to be a con exclusive that we are supposedly getting as well. Uh, we know that conventions and whatnot are canceled right now due to the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, at least a lot of conventions are, not every convention, but I'm pretty sure the SDCC convention is canceled. The um, the Gold Head Destro, I believe, was supposed to be an SDCC exclusive. So, if you pre-order from a certain uh, toy store, then he is, uh, he is actually getting his hands on the Gold Head Destro. So he is selling them in sets of one, two, three, four figures. And that is all of Wave 2, including the exclusive. You have Gung Ho, the Red Ninja, and you have Cobra Commander. I'm going to see if I can get a few extra Red Ninjas just so that I can do whatever with them. First, I, I don't know why I want to army build these. It's so weird to me. Uh, wave 3... Uh, is rumored to contain um, a, a character that we don't see here on this mural on the uh, on the back of the box. It's rumored to contain a Zartan figure and movie figures. I'm hoping that Baroness is going to be one of those figures. Baroness, if she looks anything like the image here, will be an awesome figure. I'm also hoping that the Alley Vipers will be part of that movie assortment. And if you look back on Roadblock's artwork here, down low, you have him fighting off a group of Alley Vipers. And they're very, very reminiscent of the original 80s release Alley Viper. They look very, very much like that Alley Viper. That figure in a six inch, I think that that figure in a six inch would be a, a hit, an absolute hit. I also want to see some regular Cobra Vipers. I want to see Cobra Troopers. I want to see everything in a six inch scale. Yeah, I do. I want to see them all in a six inch scale. Um, I've I've dis had many discussions with people over the last uh, couple months about whether or not uh, the six inch scale is gonna do well, whether it's gonna succeed or whether it's gonna fail. 
Uh, a lot of people seem to think that it's going to fail. And I'll tell you, it will fail if we don't support it. By all means, don't support it if you don't want it. You don't have to. You don't have to buy them. But I hope that it's a huge success. I hope that we get plenty of really, really cool six-inch figures. I know that space is a big concern for a lot of people, and that's one of the things about this packaging that kind of is a benefit. They don't take up a whole lot of space. Shelf space, but especially like loose. I mean, if these figures are loose, they're probably not going to take up a whole lot of space. Uh, even as they are. The retail versions, they didn't overdo it on the packaging. They kept the packaging simple. It's a box with a tray insert. Now, do we have file cards on the back or anything? I don't think that we have any file cards. And I don't see anything on the inside either. I see an instruction booklet taped to the bottom, looks like, or stuck in under the tray, maybe. But I don't see a file card. Interesting. I also see where when they packaged uh, Duke here across the uh, top, here across the top, the flap of this box is on the inside of his uh, background piece behind the tray. It's interesting that we don't have file cards that tell you anything about the uh, the figures. That was one of the things from the uh, the classic GI Joe line that a lot of people really enjoyed. There's people that collect all of those file cards and their variants, but we don't have um, we don't have a a bio or anything with these, at least on the outside of the box. That could be completely different for the inside of the box. There may very well be something inside there, maybe um, maybe behind that tray insert, there's something, but I, I don't know. I would hate to speculate at this point. So anyway, I'm just, I, I, I'm caught up admiring these figures at the same time as I'm trying to talk about them, but uh, the weapons definitely do look cool. Uh, Scarlet with her crossbow and knives. It looks like those all may actually be able to be carried by the figure. And Destro, I'm curious as to whether or not that briefcase opens up. And if it does, what is inside? Is it a laptop? And then Gung Ho with this big directed energy weapon. And the metallic paint just embracing that sci-fi aspect of G.I. Joe. Now, uh, another reason why I think that a lot of these figures uh, come with a, a futuristic directed energy weapon type thing is that a lot, of, um, a lot of our mainstream media and a lot of our culture, uh, at least media-wise and, uh, and toy-wise, they are starting to... Uh, push away from uh, from guns and perceived violence and whatnot with some toys. And, you know, in some lines, I can see that. In other lines, I don't see it. So, I mean, you kind of just need to take it with a grain of salt and believe whatever you, what, whatever you want to believe based on what information you can find. Um, you know, you have plenty of, uh, plenty of figures and plenty of toys uh, that are hitting the, the, the shelves in stores that are purely military toys with realistic looking weapons and whatnot. We know that the new action force, uh, the new action force figures from Bobby Valla, uh, those have very detailed, realistic recreations of actual firearms. Uh, I believe that he's also selling uh, uh, accessory packs and, and weapons packs and whatnot. Um, I need to, I, I actually, I need to get some of those action force figures pre-ordered so that I can have some when they come in and, uh, get some videos going with those and do some comparisons, uh, with the, with the GI Joe figures. They'll, they'll be the same scale, the six inch scale figures. Uh, one of the things about Destro, his head looks to be like a chromish silver paint. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that it's it's pretty shiny uh the original Destro figure like this uh which this is very reminiscent based on the uh original uh, one of the original uh Destro figures uh and the character uh, from the cartoon 
he uh, his, his, his same type of uniform. I, I really enjoy the fact that they've done that with these figures. They've kept them looking very similar to their vintage counterparts. Um, but if you if you owned a Destro figure, you know that that head was chromed. And uh, sometimes you find those and the, the chrome has worn off. There was also one that came out in like 1990. The head on that figure was actually just painted silver. Not quite as uh, uh, shiny as that one. But the head was just painted silver. And Snake Eyes, his, uh, his visor was uh, a little bit different color in the, uh, ah, in the original 85 figure. And as, if you look here, it, it appears as though the figure that they're showing here on the back on the mural is actually the uh, uh, Hasbro Pulse exclusive figure, uh, the way the paint scheme is on them and whatnot. So, but yeah, very, very, very nice looking figures. I'm impressed uh, getting this case. I'm definitely going to buy more. I mean, I'm already committed to another uh, another wave. I might as well go ahead and uh, see if I can commit to more additional figures and, and maybe do some uh, some troop building and whatnot. Okay, thanks for joining me for the unboxing of that G.I. Joe Classified Series set of figures, the full Wave 1 unopened case. Uh, that, was, that was fantastic for me to get to open that up and check those figures out. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. I do have a lot more stuff to open up and show you guys and review and whatnot. Uh, some of the Hasbro uh, Ghostbusters figures with the build a ghost. As soon as the last figure comes in for it. All right, guys. Yo, Joe.